Hey everyone, Jacqueline Howard here. We live in an evolving world. People, places, and things are constantly changing. That's evident at the Field Museum in Chicago, where more than 24 million specimens and objects are housed for research. Googly-eyed bats in jars, freaky frozen furry creatures, scary skeletons ravaged by flesh-eating beetles. Yeah, it's ghoulish, but it's also science. Each specimen can show us examples of evolution and is studied by scientists to pinpoint specific changes in a species' morphology, that is, its shape and form. These changes aren't just seen in the past, but the present, and may shed light on the future. But how? And why? Well, I'm here at the Field Museum to find out. I'm going to meet with Mammals Collection Manager Bill Stanley, and this could get wild. People often ask, well, what are some very extreme changes that we can see in mammals that we're familiar with? And uh, my favorite is the dolphin. Cetaceans reinvaded the sea after being on land as land mammals for long periods of time. And as they got further and further out to the sea, they lost the need for their back legs. And we can see this in the fossil record. That when you lose the back legs, you lose the need for the pelvis. These bones here are free floating in the back third of the animal and are the remnants of the pelvis. That's an extreme example of gradual change. And if you take a close look at deer mice, they'll show you change in action. Recent studies have suggested changes in the little rodent skull size and even one population's coat color. But Bill said there's also something called punctuated equilibrium. That's when evolutionary change seems to have taken place in a very short period of time. There may be no intermediate forms of the species, so that sometimes eerily leaves no timeline. Case in point, the hero shrew. There is one shrew that is, from the standpoint of the vertebral column, the most bizarre mammal in the world. With this animal, given that there are no transition forms, there are nothing in between this vertebral column morphology and the morphology of all other shrews or all other mammals, this has been suggested to be an example of punctuated equilibrium where everything was constantly the same shape, roughly speaking, until a very uh, marked change in the morphology of the vertebral column in a very short Time frame. The vertebral column is similar in all mammals. See that? It's the lumbar region of a typical cat. And most mammalian spines look like that. Mine, yours, even your dog's. But here's a change in the spine of a shrew that, as Bill called it, is bizarre. This is uh, the hero shrew. And unlike uh, you or I or the cat, there are 15 to 20 processes on the sides of these vertebrae and they interlock. And the muscles that are associated with this and this fortified lower region of the backbone give this animal incredible strength. Now here's the mind-blowing part. We don't know why. Behind these doors is the wild and sometimes downright creepy way scientists learn more about change in species. To answer that question, why? Scientists stash and study animals once they've died, spanning over centuries to pinpoint changes in morphology. Now the animals are frozen and dissected before researchers then preserve their skins, their skeletons, and... The other way that we often preserve animals is to pickle them. By that I mean that the animal is injected with formalin and then switched to ethanol. So this is a hammerhead bat that is sitting in a jar of 70% ethanol. Eek! But let's keep it 100. What's the point of all this? These animals are very much a part of the fabric of our lives. They may be eating seeds that are important for plants that we like. They may be pollinating trees that are vital for getting medicines from. They may be food for raptors mm -hmm. that we like to watch. They may be carrying ticks that carry certain diseases. If we can predict how these animals are going to change, then we can predict what's going to happen with all these other things that these animals are so integral to. I told you things could get wild. But seriously, how cool is that that animals we see every day are constantly changing? Tell me what you think. You know the drill. Talk nerdy to me. <laughs>